Thank you for introduction. So can you hear me in the audience in the UK? Yes, okay, thank you. So I am Kogi Kushiba from Shimada Marine Research Center, University of Tsukuba. Today I talk about the uh, uh, sp uh, regulation of spam fragile motility. And, uh, before I start, I would like to thank the organizer uh, for inviting me to the, this seminar. It is a very good uh, great pleasure uh, to introduce my story to the audience in Kyoto here and the, uh, in UK. So uh, I am working at the marine station so and uh, using the various marine animals to study the cell motility, especially the sperm uh, motility. Uh, this movie is a uh, Sayona, is a uh, tunicate, acidian, it's a marine organism, it's uh, the sperm. It's, uh, it is uh, captured by the high speed camera, it's uh, at the 3000 frames per second. So uh, I play this movie, it's very slow, so actual speed is uh, 100, faster, 100 times faster than this. So I'm very interested in the, uh, how this smooth web home is generated and regulated in the very micro world. So this movie is a sea cucumber. It's a, this is a, uh, taken to this video. It's a nearby our marine station. And, and uh, this, this is a male sea cucumber. And uh, you can see they release a sperm. This is a this, like uh, this white one is a sperm. So uh, you know the most marine organism it spawned the egg and the sperm outside, in the, uh, and then they perform the uh, fertilization in the sea. So these uh, animals like a sea cucumber, sea urchin, and coral, it's some al al algae, macroalgae. They spawn their gamete to release to the sea, and uh, they use the timing with the life cycle or tidal cycle or some lunar cycle. So you know the in the ocean there's a, uh, many uh, organism in the, there, but, so, but they spawn the, at the same time. So uh, how they uh, perform the, their fertilization in the, in the same species. So one strategy is a sperm chemotaxis. So here I show the uh, cyanar uh, egg and the sperm. You can see the sperm to approach to the egg. is like uh, some turning move by turning, turning movement. So it's because by uh, uh, some attractant, it's released by eggs. So this is the sperm chemotaxis. It is a very uh, important strategy to fertilize that uh, with the same species. So the, this is my uh, experimental animals, the Siona in this nariz, a kind of the acidian. So I use these animals to study the sperm chemotaxis. So why I choose this animal? Uh, it is the uh, most uh, uh, important reason is the chemoattractant is identified. So as I, uh, uh, I told you, the, the sperm chemotaxis is a very important recognized uh, species and species uh, recognition. Uh, so the egg releases uh, some chemicals. It's very species-specific uh, chemicals. So it means uh, it is very uh, difficult to identify the, the chemicals. They have very uh, their own uh, chemicals. So these uh, animals, Siona, it is a, that the chemoattractant is identified. This is a structure of the, the, the chemoattractant. It's called SAF. It is a SAF means a sperm activating and attracting factors. So this uh, chemical is a kind of the sulfate conjugated hydroxysteroid. And the uh, egg release this chemical at the fertilization. So they have the very high species specific activity. So the sperm chemotaxis is a very common phenomenon in the, some uh, animals or many organisms. But it's a very few animal uh, the attractant is identified. So as I told you, the, that the self, this chemical, is not the only the function of the attractant. They also have the, have, have the function of the sperm motility activation. 
So, uh, cyanus sperm is an uh, immortal, it's uh, just after dilution to the uh, seawater. But if you added uh, this chemical stuff, you can see the sperm started the motility the very at the uh, instance. It is uh, almost actual speed. It's a very quick response. So, so there's a, if there are no egg, it's a sperm is immortal. But the near the uh, egg, sperm uh, can start the, the motility. And uh, this is uh, my experimental system for the sperm chemotaxis. So I uh, observe the uh, sperm behavior under the microscope, like uh, this uh, picture. So this is uh, my uh, scheme of the um, chamber, uh, sperm chamber here. And I make the chamber by the slide glass and the cover glass, and there's a spacer by the silicon sheet. And uh, here is a very uh, microcapillary. It's containing the sap with agar. So I observe the sperm movement, and the uh, sperm movement is uh, around the, this uh, glass capillary tip. So this is a movie. It's, you can see a sperm is uh, accumulating to the tip of the uh, glass capillary. So this is a swimming trajectory in the chemotaxis. So this is a coordinate. The origin is the tip of the glass capillary. So here is the attractant source. So control is a, that glass capillary uh, just uh, containing the only agar, no chemicals. And uh, here is a, I aligned the, uh, some uh, spam trajectory around the, uh, the glass tip containing the different concentration of the surf. You can see the sperm not directly uh, go to the tip of the attractant. They uh, swim circular, and then the, if they uh, sperm, uh, swim away from the tip, the sperm shows the turn, and then go straight. So it's chemotactic behavior. It consists of the turn and the straight movement. So how sperm movement is regulated at the swimming direction? So sperm movement is uh, consists of the, uh, the flagellum. It uh, consists of the two bend, and the uh, two bend is a uh, propagate is a base to the tip. So if this two bend is the same curvature like this, so sperm goes straight. If the, this uh, curve, the bend or the two bend. It's a, it's a one is a, a smaller than the uh, uh, another one. It's a sperm uh, swim in the circle. So we call that this is a symmetric wave for the straight swimming, and this is an asymmetric wave for the circular swimming. So here I show the sperm flatter wave trace during the uh, chemotaxis around the glass capillary tip. So uh, as I showed you, sperm show the chemotaxis with a turn and a straight movement. So here, there's a three uh, characteristic uh, fragile wave form pattern. It's here, A, is slightly asymmetric. This is uh, some control condition. It's a sperm swim in the, this wave form, and they swim the, in the circle in the same position. But if uh, there is some chemo attractant gradient, so sperm fragile wave form dramatically change to the asymmetric. So then here, sperm turn. And then quickly, that the fragile wave form to change to the symmetric. So sperm goes straight in this way. So sperm repeat uh, this uh, behavior and then uh, can approach to the tip of the uh, that is attractant source. So asymmetry is uh, important to uh, determine the swimming behavior. Uh, it is regulated by its uh, intercellular signal, calcium ions. So this is an uh, uh, experiment. So we can uh, remove the membrane of the sperm and uh, so it becomes sperm, become dye, like uh, uh, 
no, uh, if they remove the membrane, they cannot swim. But if you added ATP, the energy to the motor uh, uh, regulation, so you can reactivate sperm. So this is a remembranated and reactivated sperm. So in this condition, if the uh, extra uh, uh, solu in solution, they have the low calcium concentration, sperm shows a symmetric web home. On the other hand, if the solution contains the high calcium ion, sperm uh, shows the asymmetric web home. It means that calcium is a very important key factor to determine the fragile asymmetry. So uh, we try to measure the intracellular, intrafragile calcium concentration by imaging. So we use uh, some fluorescent dye. It's a, uh, here is a fluor 8A8. Uh, it is a, a fluorescent indicator, calcium indicator. You can visualize intracellular calcium level by the, this uh, fluorescent dye. So, and then we observe the sperm movement during chemotaxis and the fluorescent microscope. So you know the sperm fragile movement is very fast and be, uh, it's very small. Uh, so we use uh, some special uh, system to uh, visualize the intercellular uh, calcium signal. It's a very fluorescent signal. So we use the LED it's, uh, and the cyan. It, this, this is a uh, this fluorescent uh, microscope. So we visualize the by uh, that the cyan LED, and then we can modify, uh, we can control the LED, and uh, we make a stroboscopic system to capture the uh, fragile web home in each uh, frames. So here is the result of the calcium imaging during sperm chemotaxis. So at the left is a control. This is the capillary tip is here. This is a control, no chemoattractant here. You can see that's the sperm head and the sperm swim in the circle in the same uh, trajectory. So when the, here is the one micromolar south here, so sperm shows the chemotactic, chemotactic behavior. You can see the, uh, when sperm turn, it's a uh, interfragile calcium level become uh, increase and then decrease. So this is a calcium increase is the trigger to the sperm chemotactic turn. So this is a, here is a more detailed analysis of the change in the interfragile calcium during sperm chemotaxis. So here, this is the trajectory of the sperm head and this dot color is the position of the sperm head, and this color shows the uh, intrafragile calcium level. So if the, here, and this is aligned the image of the sperm. You can see is the when sperm is a swim away from the attractant source, this is like intercellular calcium is increase and decrease. Here is the number two, it is the highest level of the calcium. So it's from here, they uh, and focus the web home. Here, that the fragile web home become asymmetry and then change to the symmetry. So this is a time cost to the change of the calcium. It's orange line is uh, in the fragile and the blue is head. So you can see the very transient increase and the decrease of the calcium. So I I told you the intercellular calcium is a determined asymmetry, but here, this is a real time calcium imaging showed the here one and three is the calcium level is the same. But this is a web home is a very different. Here is asymmetric and here is a symmetric. It means that only the calcium not determine the asymmetry and the symmetry and they trigger the asymmetric web home but uh, that the calcium increase and the decrease is uh, correlated with the fragile web home, but it's uh, not uh, uh, it, uh, 
actual level of the uh, level is not correlated with the uh, fragile wave home. So this is a model for the sperm chemotaxis. So within the attractant gradient, is a egg releases the attractant, and uh, when sperm swim away from the source, is the calcium increase is a uh, occur. So it triggers the asymmetric wave home. And then calcium is a uh, decrease, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's out from the uh, sperm. And then sperm shift to the straight seeming with a symmetric web home. So it, uh, this repeated is a calcium uh, signal, calcium transient increase uh, is uh, uh, induced the, some uh, chemotactic behavior. And then this is uh, some uh, mechanism to how sperm uh, change the web home and the approach to the egg. So this uh, trajectory is uh, not only uh, observed in this species. So most uh, many animals or uh, show the sperm chemotaxis. That the swimming trajectory is the same. They also swim by flagellar and the regulated by uh, flagellar wave home. So I uh, think that this mechanism is very common in among the uh, most animals organisms. So this video is a sperm flagellar movement during a chemotactic turn, as I showed. It is a more uh, recorded by Foster. It is uh, recorded at the 2,000 frames per second. So it's very slow playing. It, uh, this video is very uh, fast, and you can see the, that the regulation of the flagellar wave form is uh, very uh, smoothly and quickly. That's not uh, it, uh, like uh, stepwise, it is a uh, smoothly change to the asymmetric to the symmetric. So, uh, sperm flagellum movement, this is the internal structure of the sperm flagellum. It is a very characteristic structure, the inside. It's called axonym. So, sperm flagellum movement is a uh, uh, consist of the uh, with uh, this uh, cytoskeleton, uh, uh, cytoskeleton is a microtubule alignment, and with the motor protein dining. Here, it's called uh, also uh, the nine plus two structure. There's a nine double microtubule in the here, and the, at the, in the center, there's a two singlet microtubule. And here, this is a motor protein dining is uh, aligned to the uh, flagellum, in the inside of the flagellum. So this is uh, some uh, possible model for the oscillatory mechanism to the flagellar bending. So it, here is the inside nine plus two structure. So if the so dining is a motor protein, is uh, they uh, they generate the host of the they move to the micro on the microtube. They push the next microtube. Its power is transformed to the microtubule sliding, and then is a but the flagella is not uh, it's attached with some uh, structure, so it's the sliding transformed to the bending, and it is the uh, activity of the dining is a very uh, uh, regulated by the position and the time and the spatiometry is uh, uh, regulated. Then. A sperm uh, band is a propagate at the base to the tip like this. So I'm interested in the how this machinery is called such a very uh, precisely is a fragile web home change in the during sperm chemotaxis. It is uh, just the bending and uh, bend and propagate just to uh, make the same uh, web home, but the during chemotaxis they change the web home. It means the activity of the dining, the motor protein is a, a change in the very quick uh, process. Here we focus on the subunit of the dining. 
designing the motor protein in the nine plus two structure. So we focus the some component of the dining is a calyxin here. This is a, a cyanide outer arm dining. The calyxin is a this here very small uh, subunit of the dining. So that the characteristic of the calyxin is a cal calcium binding. Is a calyxin is a have the calcium binding domain and regulated the dining is activity. It is calcium dependently. So here is my previous study. So calaxin is a very important for the sperm chemotaxis. We use the calaxin specific inhibitor. So in control, is a sperm shows the sperm chemotaxis like this. But if I uh, incubated with a calaxin inhibitor, the sperm chemotax behavior is a uh, completely uh, blocked. So they don't show the tongue, it's uh, like this. So it shows the calaxin is very important for the regulation of the sperm, uh, fragile web home regulation the, during a chemotaxis. So, and this is a, a, another experiment to examine the calaxin function. We isolated the dining from the cyanus sperm, and this is some uh, experiment to examine the dining activity. We uh, purified and isolated only the dining here, and then we put the microtuber. This is a microtuber from the uh, brain at a big, big brain. And then we, this is called the in vitro motility assay. We can directly measure the dining activity under the microscope. So here, this white line is a microtuber. So here is a dining, but you cannot see a dining directly, but you can see the microtuber movement by dining. So this is a, some, a show the dining activity. If there is no calaxin, it's a microtubo is a slide to the this speed. But if with calaxin and with calcium, it's the microtubo sliding is become very slow. It means the calaxin it suppresses the dining dream microtubo translocation. So it uh, suggested that this calaxin is a regulated dining more lining the activity. So for further analysis on the regulatory mechanism of the sperm motility, we uh, developed a new system for the uh, uncaging system and uh, with uh, using a cage compound. We are uh, interested in the how calaxin is regulated the uh, generation of the regulation of the fragile web home. So we use the case of ATP. So ATP is a uh, uh, energy of the uh, en to uh, activate the dining. So we use the case of ATP and then use the UV flash. So case ATP has the no uh, uh, they have uh, case ATP is a is a ATP function is a masked. But if the, you uh, added the UV light, uh, Kate is uh, and Kate is uh, occurred, and then ATP become active. So here is a movie using the uncaging system. So here is a demembranated sperm. So this is an incubator with a Kate ATP. So before UV flash, sperm is immortal. But if flash, UV flash, it's an ATP that release from the cage compound. You can see the uh, fragile web home generation. In the, this is a low calcium condition. You can see the generation of the web home under the low calcium condition. You can see the symmetry the web home it occurs like this. On the other hand, this is a high calcium concentration. So we also put the UV light. You can see the asymmetric fragile web home is uh, generated. In this uh, 
uh, experimental system, uh, we again use uh, some galaxy inhibitor. So if the low calcium condition is a galaxy inhibitor, the, the, the symmetric web home is uh, uh, generated very normally, is uh, as the same as the control. But uh, at high calcium concentration with the galaxy inhibitor, you can see fast bending is uh, induced, but it stop and never propagate to the tip. It means the uh, galaxy is, uh, is important for the propagation of the asymmetric web home. So this cal calcium induces the fast bending, but the, when galaxy is inhibited, it's uh, that the asymmetric web home is uh, never propagate. So we analyze uh, this uh, process is, uh, in detail. So we analyze the fragile curvature is uh, in the flagellum, along the flagellum. So we plot the uh, ca curvature, fragile curvature is uh, against the distance from the, this is the spam head here, the base and the tip, and uh, plot the ca curvature uh, like this. And uh, spam bend is a two uh, opposite is a bend, and uh, this side and uh, another side. Uh, we uh, distinguish a plus positive value and the negative value, and plot the curvature. And also, we plot the, uh, we analyze the time course. This is a result of the how sperm uh, fragile web home is uh, propagate. And uh, here is a uh, cal low calcium level. And here is the time after UV flash. So here is uh, the color is uh, indicated the curvature. If the color become red, it is uh, uh, this side of the curvature, and the blue is the uh, opposite side of the curvature. And then you, and uh, here, this y-axis is a distance from the base. It's a head to the tip. So uh, just after the UV flash, so sperm has a no curvature. It is a all green level. But uh, after the uh, 0.1 second later, it's uh, at the base. The fragile bending is uh, uh, generated and propagate to the tip like this. And uh, this red level, is, uh, blue level is uh, uh, almost the same. It means a symmetric web home is uh, performed in this condition. And in here, this is a high calcium condition. It, uh, you can see it's uh, at the first, the, at the base of the fragilum, uh, it's red bend is uh, uh, generated and then propagate. And the blue is the uh, opposite side, it's uh, not so strong, but it's uh, also generate and propagate. And here, CD is uh, with a calcium inhibitor. It's a uh, low calcium concentration. It is a, uh, the bend is uh, uh, normally to uh, generate and propagate. It's uh, similar to control. But the, if the calcium uh, inhibitor under the high calcium condi condition, the band is just only the generated the base of the flagellum, like this. So this is a, a, a model of the how calcium is a, a function in the flagellar web home uh, regulation. So in low calcium condition, it's a fast bend is uh, uh, generated at the base, and it uh, this is a uh, uh, the first bend here, and it switch to the second bend, and the opposite bend is uh, generated at the base and propagate. It causes the symmetric wave. On the other hand, high calcium condition here is a fast bend, but fast and strong bend to uh, form the asymmetric wave home. And then second bend is uh, generated, is like this. But the, here is a, a strong fast bend and a, a weak uh, uh, another, another side of the bend is regulated. It is a very special uh, condition. So we think the collection is a, a function in the here to propagate the fast strong bend to propagate the tip 
and the second weak band is generated at the base. And so this is uh, some hypothetical model to formation of the asymmetric waveform by collapsing. So this is uh, some model of the sperm chemotaxis, uh, regulation of the fragile waveform during chemotaxis. So to uh, to turn to the attractant source, fragile waveform uh, should be become the asymmetric here by calcium. So calcium uh, influx occurred is a uh, that the specific point with the chemotax uh, chemoattractant gradient, and here calcium increase occurs, and the calcium is uh, bind to the calcium, and uh, this asymmetric waveform is formed by uh, collapsing and propagate. And then uh, they, uh, they perform the, the, some turning movement by asymmetric waveform. And they switch to the straight waveform. So we uh, haven't known the, the, the mechanism of the how straight waveform, the symmetric waveform, is uh, generated and uh, regulated this, uh, such a uh, quickly. But uh, this is a model what we think. So now, so so far, I have introduced our study on the sperm chemotaxis in the very limited experimental conditions under the microscope. But the you know the in natural environment in the ocean, so it is a very different from the experimental condition. So here, it, this is a uh, that is a cyana, it's acidian. They. The, this is also not natural condition, but we put the, such a rope, and the, this is a, some plant pot. So just put the, this pot to the ocean. It's, a, it's a naturally attached to the cyana on the pot. So this is a wild type of the uh, acidian, uh, cyana. And they have the sperm, and they release the egg and sperm. Maybe sperm chemotaxis occurs in such a natural condition. So for, to move to the next step, for understanding sperm chemotaxis. So we need to know how do sperm approach the egg in the natural field. So recently, we started the collaboration with the researcher who have the various backgrounds, such as the biophysics, engineering, physics, mathematics. So the project is uh, supported by some uh, grant by MEXT, and uh, this name is our project is Ethological Dynamics in a di diorama, di diorama Environment. So this is the reason uh, today I talk here. So, uh, so we, uh, this uh, aim of the, this project is uh, to understand is, uh, some uh, single cell uh, behavior or uh, some uh, uh, their strategy uh, to uh, how, how they uh, response to the, uh, some uh, in, in various uh, uh, phenomenon. So we, uh, we know the explorer, they are skillful uh, environmental and situational adaptive ad ad ability is at the cellular level. So we uh, use the, some sperm, and uh, I study on the sperm chemotaxis, and other uh, researcher is a study on the microalgae to make the bloom. So we focus on the, these two phenomena and the, to reveal the, how uh, the cell responds to the inner nature field. So by supported by some uh, biofluidic or physical, there's some many new uh, uh, collaboration. So please visit our web page to get more information about this project. So I, uh, so that, uh, to the end of the, my talk, uh, I briefly introduced uh, my uh, recent uh, uh, try uh, by using the diorama environment. So I, as I told you, is uh, we need to know the how sperm swim in the natural world. So actually, sperm swim in the 3D uh, space. So today I showed you the many fragile web home. It is a very limited condition. It's a planar uh, condition. But uh, actually, sperm, sperm swim in the 3D, like this. You can see. 
So now I uh, move to the lens to the uh, below. You can see the sperm in the, like uh, here, it's a very 2D uh, space. I, this is a free space. Sperm swims are very freely. But the, on the surface, a glass surface, the slide glass, or uh, the surface of air, sperm show the sigmotaxis, uh, sigmotaxis and then trap to the surface, and then uh, they swim in a very planar. So um, in my study, we use uh, this condition to put the capillary and the uh, capture the, their behavior. But uh, I want to know the how sperm uh, swim and the response in the 3D uh, space. So then we start to, to con uh, construct a, a system for the spam 3D tracking and supported with a member of our project. This is a collaboration with uh, Dr. Kenji Kikuchi at Tohoku University. So we uh, prepared some system to track the 3D uh, movement. This is uh, uh, based on the uh, previously uh, published paper. So we use the piezo device and uh, attach to the objective lens and we move to the, the objective lens very fast, uh, high speed by piezo device. And we scan the uh, spam position of the 3D uh, uh, condition. This is some uh, measurement for the 3D movement. So objective lens move to the very fastly. So we captured with a very high speed uh, camera. It is a uh, 8,000 frames per second recording. So we can uh, capture the way it's a where spam positioned in the this that axis. So in if we, when uh, we move the pieces uh, attached the objective lens in the 50 hertz, we can uh, search the uh, 200 micrometer area and uh, with uh, every 20 millisecond. And uh, we reconstructed the position of the sperm. And here is a scanning of the uh, sperm movement in the 3D dimension. So it's, uh, I marked the red level. You can see the, this sperm here, and next here, and next here. Huh? Yes. And then reconstructed that their trajectory with the sperm head. So you can see the sperm uh, trajectory is a helical and uh, in the 3D. So to analyze uh, this helical trajectory, we uh, also collaborated the, uh, some of the member of the, our project, Dr. Kenta Ishimoto here from RIMS at Kyoto University. And uh, it is a it's very difficult to analyze and understand the sperm trajectory in 3D in the some helical trajectory. So, uh, so Dr. Ishimoto uh, supported my some analytics and the, uh, some fitting model. And then uh, I got the some uh, parameter with the, the radius of the helical movement or pitch and frequency, velocity, or, and so on. And we compare the, uh, the swimming between the 2D and 3D. In 2D, sperm swims in circle in the same uh, uh, 2D uh, space. And uh, in 3D space, they uh, swim the spiral. So we compare the, the, the pass curvature, the, the circle size, and the uh, uh, swimming velocity. So here is a 2D and the 3D, and uh, that the pass curvature, pass curvature means, uh, so it become a uh, small value, means uh, linear motility, and the 3D is a uh, very more small circle. It shows us in 3D, uh, it's a sperm helical path is very smaller than the uh, planar condition. And the swimming velocity also faster than 3D. And interestingly, so we are interested how why spam swim in circle in the same direction? So here I show you in the 2D uh, space, spam 
same circle, but the almost same uh, direction. So we analyzed the, some uh, swimming, uh, swimming uh, rotation direction, these are the 2D and 3D. In 2D, it's a, some part of the sperm shows the, uh, almost 80% shows a clock, counterclockwise swimming, but the 20% is a, a clockwise. But in 3D condition, the all sperm shows the counterclock uh, swimming. It's the same rotation. It's very interesting. And also we uh, compare the, with the, some uh, the, uh, 3D uh, swimming in the, in the different condi activated condition. So maybe I uh, briefly introduce my result. So it's a, a self uh, activated sperm. And uh, there's some another factor to activate sperm here, the tail feeding. So you can see the 2D swimming path is uh, uh, different from the, these two activation conditions. And we also compare the 3D swimming path in the, this self-activated condition and the tail feeding condition. So you can see the, some helical uh, trajectory or uh, uh, radius of the helical path is uh, different from the, these two conditions. It's the same as a 2D condition. So here is uh, some tail feeding activated sperm and self-activated sperm, 2D and 3D. There is uh, some difference, but the tendency of the uh, pass curvature is uh, smaller in the, in the self-activated, and the, it is uh, similar to the 2D and 3D. So uh, this is uh, some uh, signaling pathway to activate sperm. Self is uh, activated sperm by some uh, via some signaling pathway. The tail feeling is skipped in this scheme, and this directly activated sperm. So that is the difference of the two swimming trajectory is a reflect of the intercellular signaling condition. So uh, as I show you, the some sperm movement is uh, uh, generated by dining activity and switching. Dining switching is regulated. So I expected that the intercellular signaling is also affected to the, this is a helical pass condition or and regulated some new uh, findings by the analysis of the 3D condition. And also we try to the chemotactic behavior in 3D. This is a reconstruction of the sperm swimming trajectory in the during chemotaxis. We succeed to, the, to capture the tongue in the 3D domain, 3D space. So this is a, and this is a trajectory. In, the, in 3D, here is the attractant source, the tip of the glass capillary. You can see the sperm go straight with, but with, the, with the helical uh, movement. And here, it's a, they go to the straight, and they change the direction in the very, uh, uh, three dimension, it is a, uh, goes down to the Z axis and uh, then turn here and then go uh, to approach to the tip of the glass capillary. So in the 3D, uh, sperm also can turn, but it's a dramatically turn in the using a 3D space. So we also trying to analyze the fragile movement 3D here is we uh, aligned the fragile web home here. So here is a very uh, planar, uh, planar space. So you can see the fragile web home like this. But here is a very uh, sperm uh, swim is a very dead axis. You cannot capture the fragile web home here. But in this system, the, we capture the all frame by uh, high-speed oscillating piezo device. So we have the, some information is uh, before and after uh, or these frames like this. So here it is a dead axis here is a, and then we can capture the other frame here. So you you can see the some partial uh, fragile wave home from the our image. So maybe we can uh, reconstruct the fragile web home in 3D in future, and then uh, try to understand the, some regulation of the fragile web home uh, in 3D in the actual natural field. So this is 
So that's it all my talk. And uh, I thank uh, my collaborator and the lab member. And uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Um, question and uh, movement from the news on the INI. Let's go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> can you, uh, the, can you? You are your question is how sense the production would that be? So thank you for your question. So your question, uh, can you see the, my slide? Can you see my slide? So your question is how sperm sense here and here and change the curvature to turn. So from this trajectory, maybe the sperm senses the uh, level of the attractant uh, concentration, but the, they always uh, turn the same position of the attractant gradient. So uh, so our uh, maybe it. Uh, um, receptor of the attractant is located uh, uh, in the flagellum. So they sense the binding rate of the attractant. And the, if the, some, and not detect the bind, maybe they sense the, some uh, detached from the receptor. So if the, some self concentration become decrease, they uh, start the, their response to trigger the calcium uh, signaling like that, and then response here, and it becomes uh, back to the basal level, and then again they uh, trigger the, the 
that response of the uh, to the attractant. So it's a, they sense the uh, self unbinding rate. I guess it is it uh, might be answer. No. So in that some efficiency is uh, so uh, I haven't uh, some analyzed some mathematical or some simulator yet. So uh, maybe I cannot answer at, at now. So your question is uh, a suggestion to. Thank you. I will try with my collaborator. <laughs> Question is from Japan. Thank you. And uh, I want to know about the scale uh, in, in the real uh, marine. Um, how, how long the spam travel to the uh, egg? Yeah. In, it is very dependent on the species, but the, this species can swim the maybe half a day. Half a day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. but some species is a very their uh, sperm. Uh, some uh, is a very short swimmer. They like fish. They uh, uh, they swim very one minute or something. But this is a, a spawner. The species like oh. uh, tunicate to spawn the egg and the sperm is outside. So maybe they uh, swim. Uh, it's a long, not so long, but it's a one hour, two hours, and uh, they find the uh, the egg. Uh, so, so in in in, in a city, uh, 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 they don't swim, swim. Yeah. Uh, so the, the experimental stable is um, maybe a short. Yeah, but this is just short. Uh, the, we just put it. Uh, Caras capillary, and then observe the some just after a quick response yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but also we interested in the the long term observation. Or this is just one source, but the in natural conditions there are many sources, there are many eggs. Yeah, yeah so it is very interesting to see the such observation. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. So, uh, I'm wondering about uh, uh, 2D and 3D uh, experiment of the uh, atomic velocity of the space, uh, velocity difference mm -hmm. of the space. So, uh, in that case, the PC, uh, so the nearby the black substrate, uh, the effective viscosity is Uh, 
It become very slow in the 2D uh, yeah. space. It, uh, I think just uh, some limitation to the space. Like so now bias help is not so defined, mm. not significant, mm. I think. So the uh, so the the the, the what the waveform. The cell is changing, or and also the uh, frequency of the beating is uh, more and more. We haven't, uh, uh, we, so now we cannot see the fragile waveform in the 3D uh, space, mean. but the, uh, maybe it is a helical trajectory. It means the fragile waveform is very different from the 2D. And, uh, it looks that uh, in this 2D condition, the fragile web home is very limited by, I don't know, effect of the uh, wall or this is uh, like, uh, so maybe 3D is uh, some dining more active than the 2D condition. So maybe spam can swim the high, high D, the higher than the some 2D. So I don't know, and uh, is a uh, uh, today's result is uh, the experimental number is very low. So we have to analyze more and more in the three D conditions. Mm. So, uh, so I think the frequency of mm. the beating can be ma major. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can. System. Yes. That's why I, I, mm. there is some difference. And I think it seems sort of uh, faster than the uh, faster in the 3D, and the 2D is uh, very slow. Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, I imagine the ghost helical path is a uh, some go to the surface of the glass. They very stuck to the surface of the glass, so it is not an not natural condition. So I don't know, but I will analyze more. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, I have a, just a naive question. I could not understand the mechanism of motor protein. So how does the dining uh, function uh, for the uh, motion of the fragile? Uh, yes, yeah, so here is the dining aligned uh, to the, uh, this is just to uh, focus the, this part and this part. This is the gray line is this part, the black line is this part. So the dining is located all nine microtubo, but the, this is the whole planar movement. If the dining activation is limited, it's only two sides, it's here on and off. And the here, the dying, it is a, this dining become active and push the next microtuber in the, this direction. So it is a sliding, it occur. But the here is a, a base or some other part is a, a inactive and the binded microtuber is a very fixed. So it uh, forms the bend of the a part, partial bend of the here and here. And it propagates the base to the tip. Very time, uh, yes, time spatiometry. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I understand. Okay, so any other question? Or comment? No? So, okay, uh, it's a good time to end. So, thanks, speak again. Thank you.